What is going on, guys? It's your boy Killer Cam, and here I am back. I am going to be recapping and previewing all 32 NFL teams this season. But before I get into that, I did tell y'all some updates were coming up on the channel. I will be reviewing Hell in a Cell and the rest of the Summer Slams this year. But I have kind of a new format I'm going to be doing it with. Um, the video is going to be like a minute to two minutes long. You've seen some, like, look at the way reviewer experience does it or a couple of other people. I think I'm going to do it better that way uh, because of my schedule and how things are working out. And if there's anything I really want to talk about, I'll make a separate video. But these are going to take me a little bit of time. So, as you can see down here at the bottom, we are talking about the Jacksonville Jaguars last year. The Jacksonville Jaguars started out one in fifteen. Or started out one and zero last year, and lost fifteen consecutive games. They had a head coach, Doug Marone, coming in. They started out one and zero against um, Indianapolis and lost their last fifteen. They they became only the fourth team in NFL history to win their first game and lose the remainder of their other ones. Uh, and a lot of games were close. You know, they had an eight point loss to Cincinnati, a three point loss to Tennessee. Two to Houston, four to Green Bay, two to Cleveland, three in overtime to Minnesota. So that's about four or five wins that they really let off the hook. But somebody that was a bright beacon to this team last year was the guy that I think was the team and the team MVP, which was running back James Robinson, who check this out was undrafted out of Illinois State. And uh, last year, he had 240 carries for 1,070 yards, seven rushing touchdowns, and had 49 catches for 344 and three receiving touchdowns. This team is going to be a lot better this year. You know, um, this team really disappointed last year with a 1-15 in record. But, you know, they got the first overall pick. You know, they, they used it on a quarterback, Trevor Lawrence. They're QB one of the future. Um, these are the draft picks that they got. They drafted Trevor Lawrence, quarterback out of Clemson. Travis Etienne, running back out of Clemson. So there you go, teammates. Corner, Tyson Campbell out of Georgia. Walker Little, offensive tackle out of Stanford. Andrew Sisco, safety out of Syracuse. Jay Tufeli, defensive tackle out of USC. Jordan Smith, defensive end out of UAB. Luke Farrell, tight end out of Ohio State. And Jalen Camp, wide receiver out of Georgia Tech. So, obviously the biggest move in that was Trevor Lawrence. And you'll see something on the screen that says ceiling and floor. The ceiling is the highest record I think the team can achieve. The floor is the lowest record I think the team will achieve and then you'll see my predictions um I'll explain to you why my ceiling is where it is and, and but you can see the season predictions and records and all of that I'm gonna go ahead and tell you I truly believe that the Jacksonville Jaguars have a ceiling of nine and eight they can go on a winning streak and why nine and eight because for those of y'all that don't know the NFL season moved from 16 games to 17 games three preseason games instead of four. So we get more football. Uh, their season kicks off on September 12th. I'm going to be doing this for every single team, like I said. Uh, these videos are going to be longer. They're going to take me a little bit more time to do. But the SummerSlam reviews, uh, Hell in the Cell reviews, all of that stuff is going to take. And I may go back and review every other previous Hell in the Cell since I've seen them. But that's a, that's a different video for a different time. Um. So, I do think guaranteed right offhand there's about four or five games that they could win. Houston is not that good of a team, so they should win at least once there. Maybe twice against them. Uh, the Jets they'll beat. They usually beat the Colts once, and I do see them beating Tennessee at least one time. And then them beating Cincinnati. So, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's six right there. Think about it. That's six wins easily. Denver could easily be a win for them. Maybe. 
that game in that game against Miami in London could it could not be a win. It all depends. And then you never know. They could be ruining their tank or something and could get a win against Atlanta. You know, I mean, they could easily get a win against Atlanta or somebody. And boom, there you go. That's nine wins. That's nine wins for Jacksonville. And I think nine and eight might creep them out of the playoffs, but could also potentially get them in. But one of the biggest stories going into this season is the acquisition of Tim Tebow, former quarterback who is now a tight end that they signed on May 15th. I mean, that's pretty big. You know, them them getting Tim Tebow, I think it's a good move. I also at the same time think that maybe uh, he's on a one-year deal. So the way I feel about it is if he works out, he works out. If he doesn't, move on from him in the offseason. Um, you know, their floor, like I said, it's 3-14 and 14 or 2-15. and 15. Like I said, this is easily a team. A lot of those games, you could say, could also be losses for other teams. But some acquisitions they picked up. They picked up Malcolm Brown, defensive lineman from... Uh, New Orleans. Um, they also picked up Marvin Jones, who was a wide receiver from Detroit. That was a good pickup. Damian Wilson from Kansas City, who's a linebacker. Carlos Hyde. Roy Robertson Harris. Cam Robinson. Tyler Shatley. Pharaoh Cooper. Chris Manhurts. James O'Shaughnessy re signed with him. Philip Dorsett. Uh, CJ Bethard, who's like a backup. Um, I'm not going down all of these guys. Jamal Agnew is somebody that they big picked up. I mean, so you never know. They've got a long way to go, though. Uh, Urban Meyer's a first-year head coach. Um, and Trevor Lawrence is a first-year quarterback. So these this team may struggle. If I were to honestly go week by week, I do think maybe they get a win in week one. They lose week two, week three. So they're sitting at one and two. I think they pull off an upset against Cincinnati to go to two and two. Uh, lose to Tennessee, that's two and three. Pull off a win against Miami to go to three and three. Then that next that next stretch is tough. So Seattle, Buffalo, and Indy, that's three and six. They go to three and seven against San Fran. They pick up a win against the Falcons, go to four and seven. Uh lose to the Rams, go to four and eight. Beat the Titans. Yes, the Titans go to five and eight. Yep, go to five and eight. Then they beat I oh, know. Then they lose to the. I think they lose this one here, to drop down to five and nine, to the Texans. They beat the Jets to go to six and nine. Lose to the Patriots to go to six and ten, and lose to the Colts to go six and eleven. I do think Jacksonville finishes 6-11. and 11, And I don't think that record is anything to scoff at. Yes, you're looking at it. Six wins, 11 losses. That's pretty bad. But that is pretty damn good for a team that went 1-15. You know, and as you can see, my prediction is 5-12 and 12 or 6-11. and 11. I'm leaning more towards 6-11 and 11 than I am 5-12. and 12. But like I said, that Miami game you could easily easily take away from them and give to Miami, and boom, there you go, five and twelve. Um, and like I said, that could change, but that could be an upset game for them uh, potentially. Um, but six and eleven for a first year uh, QB and head coach is nothing to really scoff at. It's not. Um, as long as they show me some progression and improvement on both sides of the football 
I think that's all that matters. I really do think that that's all that matters in a situation like this. Um, because, you know, a lot of times when you have a first-year head coach and a first-year quarterback, things tend to not go too well. So let's hope, let's hope things turn around. Let's hope Trevor Lawrence gets the help that he deserves and isn't, you know, isn't stuck running around in circles looking like Patrick Mahomes did in the Super Bowl. Also, weekly picks will be coming up here on the channel as well as reviews. So this is going to kind of be a WWE and NFL channel. Um... I mean, this team's got a long way to go. This team is very underrated. And if ETN can progress, James Robinson and him could be a good one-two punch. They've James Robinson's got to look good to keep some of that pressure off of Trevor Lawrence. My team MVP this year on, uh, on offense, my team MVP... I know he hasn't played it down yet. I'm I'm high on Trevor Lawrence though. You know, I, I really am. I think he's gonna do good. Uh I'm predicting um I'm gonna predict twenty two touchdowns and eleven or twelve interceptions. Which is a good year. Pretty good. Especially if it's a rookie. I'm I'm gonna give him that. Um What we do know, though, is, um, you know, Minshew, Luton, and Bethard are still all there. Um, I'm going to tell you, I think the defensive, the defensive MVP is going to be Josh Allen. You know, Allen's been looking good, you know, his last couple of years, um, that he's been on the team. Uh, shoot. Trying to see here. And you know it's sad. They didn't have any pro bowlers last year. Um, Josh Allen has only made it to the pro bowl one time, and that was in 2019. James Robinson got snuffed in the pro bowl last year, and that was not all that good. Anyway, uh, I'm not gonna hold you guys too too long. Uh give me your give me your um let me know what you think down in the comments. How good do you think Jacksonville is going to be? Uh, I do think that they're two or three years away from making a splash. If if they can get on a run this year, maybe. I think they show progression this year. Next year, they could be in the playoffs. And two years from now, they can actually win a playoff game or contend if they play like they're supposed to. What what they're missing is, and it's hard to believe that four years ago, this team was one game from the Super Bowl. And pretty much all of those pieces have just gone. Pretty much every single team that was there just lost in the shuffle. And it, it's a shame. But it happens. You know, and, and, and it really is sad. You know, but like I said, it does happen indeed. But like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And um, yeah, next up in the next episode, we will be looking at the New York Jets. Yes, do not forget to look at that. We will be looking at the New York Jets. Peace. I'm out.